Hello everyone, my name is Confident and it's great to have you back. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new checkbox group widget and I'm going to show you some of its properties and ways in which you can configure it. So for us to get started, I am going to head over to the widget section and I'm going to drag a new checkbox group widget into the canvas. And right here we have the checkbox group widget on the canvas. So take a look at some of the properties we have. Uh, the first one we have here is the options properties. And these are the options that are used to build the checkboxes that are shown in the checkbox group widget. So we can go on to add a new option by clicking on the option button. We can give this um, a name. So let's say white, for example. And we can give this a value, let's say white. And there we have a new option in the checkbox group. Taking a look at this, you can see that we have white added in. Uh, something important to note here is that you can go into the JavaScript mode by clicking on JS button and then you have the option to supply an array of objects that have a label and value just as we added using the GUI and all those options supplied using this array would be rendered as checkboxes on the UI. So we can head back to the UI mode and we have the same thing showing up here. You can also delete entries by clicking on the small delete button we have over here. So I'm not going to delete green. And here we have three options showing up on the widget. Moving on, we have the default selected value property. And this is the value that will be selected by default whenever the checkbox widget is rendered. So let's set this to something like red. And you see that we have red selected by default. So this gives you the option to have something selected by default whenever the widget is rendered. We also have some properties to control the presentation of the checkbox group widget. And the first one we have here is the inline property. So let's turn this on. This provides a fluid container which tries to make all checkbox entries horizontal. So I'm just going to expand this so that you have an idea of what I'm trying to do here. So you see now that we have um, a horizontal layout for the checkbox widget versus the vertical stack layout that they were in before we turned down the inline property. So let's set this back to um, vertical by turning this off. And here we have a vertical orientation for the widgets. The next property we have here is the required field. And this is designed to be used with a form widget. So turning this on would disable form submission until the user actually goes in to select an option from the checkbox group. So we're going to set this off. We also have the visible property and this controls the visibility of the checkbox group widget. And same also goes for the disabled state. This marks the checkbox group widget to be disabled or not. And for any of these properties, uh, the inline property, the required property, the visible property and the disabled property, we can go into the JavaScript mode to write some JS logic that would uh, set these properties to be on or off depending on the state of the logic. Moving on to actions, we have the ability to run an action whenever the selection changes. So if your user selects an item from the checkbox group or unselect something, we can choose to trigger an action. And we have any of these predefined actions that can be executed, or we can go into JavaScript mode and write something more complicated that will want to be executed whenever the selection on the checkbox group widget changes. So I'd like to show you some of the properties of the checkbox group widget. And to illustrate that, I'm going to bring in a text widget into the canvas. So I'm just going to bring in a text widget. Let's expand this a bit. All right. And for the um, text property of the text widget, I'm just going to try to access the checkbox group widget. So we have checkbox group one. And taking a look at the evaluated value pane, you have an idea of the kinds of properties that we can access from the checkbox group. Uh, this is quite a lot, and some of this may come in handy in the type of application you may want to build. But um, one property that is of noteworthy importance is the selected values property. And this is an array of values that have been selected using the checkbox group. So selecting something like blue, you see that we now have blue added to the array, and we can also select white. You see we have white added to the array. And the selecting something also updates the array of selected values. All right, so this has been a checkbox group widget. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, leave a comment to let us know, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.